the heart and soul behind every business. Stories. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, hosted by me, Joshua Laurie. From setbacks to comebacks, from tragedies to triumphs, we inspire entrepreneurs through conversations that matter. Witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. Whether it's your career, business, or life, your success is always one story away. This is Business Story of the Week. Hi, this is Janet Pollack, and you are turning into Business Story of the Week. Fantastic. And that is the lovely Janet Pollack herself. She's going to be our guest for today. And of course, my name is Joshua. I am your host. Every day, every week, every episode, we start off with a question. The question today is, the question I'd like to ask today is, is leadership more of an art or a science? Or can we truly master both? Well, Janet is the perfect guest to answer that question. Janet is a distinguished executive coach, speaker, and author with over 30 years of diverse experience. Her illustrious career includes serving as a retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps and two decades as a global leadership coach. Janet has collaborated with new emerging and executive leaders across various industries in the U.S., China, Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, Puerto Rico, Ireland, the Netherlands, and Switzerland, everywhere. Janet's been everywhere. She is the author of Seven New Mistakes Managers Make and the founder of In the Lead Incorporation. And today, Janet is going to share her story, her insight, and her wisdom with us today. Janet, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you doing? doing great, Joshua, and thank you for such a beautiful introduction. When someone else reads it, you think, oh my goodness, I did all that. So thank you so much. It's wow. wonderful to be here. It is fascinating, Janet. Uh, maybe there's a, you, you have had an illustrious career. That's exactly what the bio says, and that there's no understatement to that. You are also a retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Marine. Very, very cool. Janet, before we truly start getting into it, because we want to talk about your book, of course, The Seven Mistakes New Managers Make and Leadership and all of that. I want to, before we get into it, I want to know who Janet is. And I want to ask, I always start off the show this way. What was the young Janet Polak, right? You know, what was she like? What would the young Janet Polak think of? of leadership. Did she always know she was going to be in the Marine Corps, by the way? What would the young Janet say to the Janet of today? Well, the young Janet would be surprised at where she's at. When I grew up, you know, girls were still becoming nurses and teachers, and I probably thought I was going to end up being an elementary school teacher most of my life. That changed when I graduated from college. There happened to be a recession going on in the U.S. And so teaching jobs were a little bit hard to come by. Peace was breaking out all over for the United States. And so I looked at the military services and the Marine Corps recruiter just hit all, touched all the right buttons about a spree and belonging and the few in the crowd. And so I joined the Marine Corps. And that's where I got my underpinnings about what is leadership. What does it look like? How do you do it? And more importantly, how do you develop it? Because on your intro, you talked about is leadership an art or a science? And yes, it is both. And what we absolutely know is that leaders are not just born, they are developed. And so when individuals decide they want to become a leader, if they work at it, they can be better and they can be highly effective. I mean, that's the thing. If you can work on it, you can be very, very effective. But of course, Shannon, you've, you've had a lot of practice. You've been in the Marine Corps. You've, teach, you've been a global leadership coach. You've, you've been an author. 30 years of diverse experience. Janet, where did it all begin? Of course, talk to us a little bit about, of course, your experience in the Marine Corps and how does it compare to coaching new managers? Was there anything, of course, that you took in your military experience that you're now constantly or regularly applying in the corporate setting? No. I think everything. So in the Marine Corps, in all the four services in the United States, I guess there's five now, the Space Force, 
we take in the officer corps, for example, brand new college graduates. They might be English majors. They might be education majors. They might be engineers. They might be scientists. And we teach them about the underpinnings of the Marine Corps, about, you know, how to wear the uniform, understand tactics. We teach them about esprit. We teach them how to wear their uniform. And we teach them about leadership. And so we take that conglomerate of society and turn them into young officers. And we don't do that on the civilian side. We, we find an exceptional individual contributor. They get things done. They inform their bosses what they're working on. They create interesting and novel solutions. And then we say, ta-da, you should be a manager, right? Because you were such a great individual contributor. And yet, if we created a Venn diagram and we said, leadership is here, an individual contributor is here, the skills that overlap are very, very narrow. And yet in business, we do it over and over and over again. And so my early career experience taught me that you can outline what is appropriate for a leadership. You can help them understand that being a good leader is working through other people and not doing it yourself. And you have a responsibility right. for setting expectations, giving them feedback, and then developing their further skills. Wow, I love that. Just setting expectations, learning to accept feedback. And like you said, I think we started this in the, the, the very beginning of the show. The question was, is leadership more of an art or a science? And I feel like currently you are teaching both because it's an important aspect to have feedback. But at the same time, I feel like there's a symphony to it, right? Like if leadership was a symphony, Janet, if leadership was a symphony, where do managers often miss the beat? And how how do you help them find their rhythm back? Yeah, such a great analogy. Joshua, thank you for that. I think you have to be open to feedback. We learned all the way back in the 1970s that leaders who are open to feedback, who regularly seek feedback, who ask, how am I doing and how could I do it better, are for, far more effective than those who are not. And so in my book, I just give brand new leaders some of the basic how-tos. I think uh, seven mistakes you can also often think about it as a recipe book. How do you give really good feedback that's feed forward, that doesn't damage your relationship, but helps you develop and further enhance the skills of the other people? How do you set effective expectations? How do you uh, manage change as a leader and help your team drive through change? And so if you're a brand new manager and haven't had a lot of training, I would say start with just the basics. Get some good resources, whether they're TED Talks, an online course, or buy my book. Get two or three other colleagues that you work with to do a book club together and talk about what good, effective leadership looks like. I just taking people community, so to speak, is very important. I think. Of course, this is, you can see this everywhere. Of course, you see this in the military, but you see it also in corporate settings where you put to, come together in a mastermind, so to speak, come together in a seminar, and you, you hear it from other people. And I think that's a very important aspect. It's one thing to hear and listen to advice from other people, but I think you touch up on a really important point there where you said willing to ask. Ask what, ask what you can do better. And I think that's, it involves humility, does it not, Janet? I think it does involve humility. It involves a sense of, I don't know everything about what I'm doing. And I am open to finding out, how can I do this a better way? The interesting thing, Joshua, we haven't touched on yet, is that as a leader, you have, like you said, in an orchestra, you have the flutes and the violins and the oboes and the cellos in the percussion yes. section that you have to make them yes, all yes, work yes. together. And that's when beauty is created. And so if you take individuals that 
are just matter of fact, you know, just the facts, ma'am. All I want to do is do my job and go home. Or there's somebody else who wants to learn and grow as much as they can. Who has a leader need to manage and develop and tap into each of those personalities, each of those instruments, if you will, to create the beauty of your team? I love that. I love that you touched up again on the, we're back to the orchestra. And it's great because you, you need to be able to find the strengths of people, right? You need to be able to find what they're good at and then all make them play that symphony, all make them play a wonderful orchestra, so to speak. Janet, you talk a lot about this. Of course, you talk a lot about it in your books. The name of the book is titled, for audience listeners out there, once again, The Seven Mistakes New Managers Make. And I love the title. Right away, boom, Seven Mistakes New Managers Make. Janet, talk to us about that. What are those seven mistakes? Yeah. So I share my title with people and they say, my gosh, as a brand new leader, I made a lot more than seven mistakes. And it's always funny. Mm. It's, it's kind of a tongue in cheek because... Who wants to read a book about the, you know, the 65 mistakes new managers make? But I think these oh, are 65. the fundamentals of good team effectiveness. It's setting expectations with each team member. It's describing your team's purpose. It's giving feedback and recognition to individuals in your team. It's managing through uh, change, developing team members. How do you do that right in the line of work? And then how do you foster mm -hmm. creativity and innovation in your team? These are all topics that are covered that. in the book and covered, you know, in, in, they are really the building blocks for brand new managers. And love it. Janet, are we able to go through those seven real quick? We don't have to, we won't have time to explain all of them, but I would love to hear those seven because this is so important. This is so important for our audience listeners, especially new entrepreneurs and new business owners who are just starting off. Yeah. So the first one is called doing instead of leading. So it's the art of working through other people rather than doing it yourself. The second mistake is having no plan, which means no execution. If you don't set out what our team is supposed to be responsible for, you aren't going to execute what you're supposed to. The third one is not developing your team, is assuming that they are learning and not taking an active role in their development. Failure to take time to give feedback and receive feedback. We've already talked about that. And not developing your power, which is a really interesting chapter about influence. How do you influence people particularly that are senior to you to get them to support your ideas? Sticking, sticking with the status quo and not being bold enough to challenge your team with innovation, thinking differently, creativity, comfortable with comfort with ambiguity. And then last but certainly not least is the importance of getting ahead of change. And I offer kind of a step-by-step -step for leaders to help them understand how do you manage change, whether you are in initiating a change in your group or you're being asked to lead a change that the organization has made. And this is always terrifying, right? But the last part right there, change. People are terrified of change. People don't want to change. And if you're in business too, like it's working. Or like oh, you, you're going to bring in a new system or you're going to try to change something. And you feel like it's going to affect your profits. It's going to affect your operations. Janet, real quick, how do you, what would be that one factor that a leader or a manager must have in order to navigate change? Well, I think you start with understanding what's going to change and what's not going to change. When we first hear that word about something's going to change, we think everything will change. And in reality, most things around us don't change. You know, we still work for the same company. Our department still does the same, has the same responsibility. We're just doing it a different way. I think that that's the first one. And Joshua, if I can add a second one, the second one is Please. understanding stakeholders to really appreciate that it's your team, yes, but it's your peers, it's your your direct your your direct supervisor, 
and maybe parts of the other organization. So really taking time to say, how will others be impacted by this change? Just not myself, just not my team. Wow, how would others be impacted by this change? And if, if that isn't the role of a manager, I don't know what is, right? Like you're always constantly thinking about others, especially that first mistake that you talked about is like doing instead of leading. I think in order to be a proper leader, so to speak, is you know how others are affected around you, how people are performing, how they feel, how how will they be affected in all sorts of aspects of the business or, or the, the organization or the corporation. Janet. Do you have a favorite mistake among the seven? I think the innovation chapter is probably my favorite, sticking with the status quo. I think leaders often say to me, well, I'm not creative. And the answer, the response to that is you don't have to be. You have to facilitate creativity and breakthrough solutions. And so in the chapter, I give a lot of suggestions about how do you do just that. And before you ask, I'm going to tell you my favorite technique. It's called make it worse. Please. And so you work together, say you're solving a problem and you work together as a team and say, how do I make this work? If I could, how would I make this worse? You know, say you're a customer service um, organization and you want to be more responsive. How would you make it worse? Well, you wouldn't answer the call or you wouldn't know the answers, or you wouldn't train your people in the products and services of the organization. And when people use Make It Worse, they have a lot of fun because it gets really silly. And I think in that silliness is when the creativity really starts to spur itself. And so then what you do when you've done that Make It Worse process, if that's all done, then you turn it around and say, for each one of these, how would I make each one better? If I'm not answering calls, how would I make it better? Well, I'd answer it on the first call. I'd have enough staff here so that customers don't have to wait on hold. And you go through the the process that way, and you really come up with some new and novel situations that way. I love that. Coming up with new and novel situations. I love, again, this is the question. We go back to that first question, right? Is it an art or a science? It's both, I believe. You're, you're telling us now that you don't have to be creative in order, in order to be innovative. You just, you know, you just have to like look beyond, you know, you have to kind of just, um, to, like you said, come up with a novel ways to think about innovating in your field, wherever that might be. Janet, of course, your the website is in the lead.com and this is something that you've also I'm sorry, let's correct it. Joshua, it's uh it's in the lead.co. So they won't get there if oh, they type in C-O. Oh, all right. And another way to get okay, there is the just my name. Co. It's right in the screen. Janet Pollock.com. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So in the lead.co and Janet Pollock.com. Janet, talk to us about in the lead, you know, the, the in the lead. I love the I love that subline there, the subtitle there. It says helping leaders lead from within. It's so it's so apt. It's so it's so accurate about what you do. Talk to us about the in the lead. Um, what was the inspiration about it, and how did it start? Yeah, well, it started by just me, you know, finding that I would be as effective as an external consultant, as an internal consultant. I've been doing this, like you said, uh, for many, many years, probably out on my own for almost 20. Um, I work with single executives. I work with um, to help them be that very effective person that they want to be, really finding their inner voice of leadership. I work with executive teams. Maybe there's a one or two new people on the team and they need to reform and launch their team. So I help them really jumpstart their performance. And then I work with organizations to help them um, develop their leaders, whether it's a strategic program or, as we've been talking about, a brand new frontline leadership program. So there's, I love that. there's a lot of variety. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, in the lead, helping leaders from within, uh, lead from within. What are these varieties that you have on there, Janet? Yeah. So it, you know, I love the variety of what I do. 
any given day, I may be working with an executive team and the next day I am delivering my leadership program. And so it's, it's a wide variety. As you said in my introduction, I've worked all over the year, all over the world. And what I learned when I worked all over the year is leadership is leadership. That regardless if, you, if you're in the Philippines, if you are in, um, in, in Norway or in Ireland or someplace here in the United States or Canada, the basics of being a good leader are pretty consistent. Setting expectations, giving feedback, allowing people a chance to learn and grow. Those are the basics of any good team, regardless of where you work and live in the world. Wow. I love that. I love that, Janet. And again, variety, spice of life, but also you're, you're not just teaching any variety. You're teaching like, uh, what, like leadership, global leadership. And then I think that right there is the penultimate, uh, like, uh, focus your, your career. Leadership is one thing, but also leading yourself is truly the goal. And you are helping others do that today, Janet. Janet, from all your global experiences, your diverse experience, of course, what is one universal truth about leadership that transcends culture and industry? I think it's the willingness to work through other people. That as a leader, you have to get out of your own way of this is how we do it. And think about how would you do it? And that will also work and be willing to coach and develop someone else, ask provocative questions, ask questions to help them, them spur their thinking, but really letting other people do it. And you are the guide, you are the check-in point, you are the ones that are encouraging them to do it well. Love that. It kind of, it kind of relates to that first mistake, right? Doing instead of leading. Mm-hmm. It's the willingness to work through other people. Again, if you're not, what kind of leader are you? If you just, you know, you're just there, you're not exactly leading. You're just expecting people to do that. But Janet, touching up a little bit on what I said earlier, and as we begin wrapping this up, you talk about global leadership, and you, you know, you shape global leaders, so to speak, to be what they are today. You help them succeed. But Janet, how do you help leaders? themselves have you how often have you encountered leaders who are kind of failing in that area of life how do you help a leader himself well fundamentally they have to want to improve their leadership so once that happens executive coaching is not about fixing people and so they have to want to have Uh, be open to doing things a different way. And then we often use assessments. We use something called 360s, which asks for feedback from the boss and the peers and the direct reports. We do psychometric assessments, which ask them about their, their personality style, their preference about interacting with other people. Basically, how do they tend to think? And so gaining that self awareness about how am I me? It helps them understand how do they lead other people. And so I think a sense of assessments helps them get clear about who they are and how do they show up to others. And how do they show up in their own lives as well? I think it's a very, very important aspect of being a leader. Janet, I think you're fantastic. The way you talk about leadership is just succinct. It's simple, it's clear, and you know exactly what it is you're trying to achieve for others. And that's a great, great mark of a leader. And Janet, thank you for being such a voice for this global leadership. Certainly, we need more people like you. Glad that we have this platform and we got to share your insights and your wisdom with us today. It was great fun. Joshua, thank you so very much. I enjoyed our conversation. Of course, once again, the website is in the lead.co, and you can also find Janet, know more or learn about more about Janet at janetcola.com. Janet, one last bit of wisdom to leave behind our audience and listeners. What would it be? Take us home. I would say, in doubt, ask for feedback. 
uh, go out and ask someone for some feedback about how am I doing and what could I do be, how could I be even more effective? What could I do differently? That's it. How can, how can you be more effective? Ask, learn to ask for feedback. How can I be better? Janet, thank you so much for coming on to the show, for coming on to the episode. I truly enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Thank you so very much, Joshua. It was, it was delightful. To all our audience and listeners out there, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right, so here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.